What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Scoop and Living. Today we're going to be making some sourdough bread. And before we can start making that bread, we want to make sure that our starter is nice and happy. Uh, so for all of this process, I'm going to be doing everything uh, with weight instead of by volume, and it's a little more precise that way. So to make sure that this starter is nice and active and bubbly for when I start the bulk ferment, uh, I'm going to use some nice warm water and some good bread flour. And so I want to do a 50-50 mixture of bread flour to water, and I'm just going to put about 40 grams. Uh, that'll be enough. I have enough in here already, so I'm just trying to get it nice and active. And so I'm going to put 40 grams of flour and 40 grams of warm water. And then I'll in here, I just like to use a butter knife, gets along the edges real nice. Uh, and so you're just going to stir this up. And we're going to keep it somewhere warm to get it nice and active so we can make our bread, our uh, pre-ferment tonight. Oh yeah, it's here? Okay, so we got that mixed up. We're gonna set it aside and we'll come back tonight in a few hours when this is nice and bubbly. All right, it has gotten much, much happier and much fluffier. So we're gonna make a pre-ferment. All right, we're going to put 100 grams of bread flour, 25 grams of whole wheat flour, 100 grams of water, 100 grams of starter. If you want to make more bread tomorrow, then you'll just feed it and do the whole process again. If you're not ready for bread quite yet, just go ahead and put it in the fridge. Now we're going to mix this and leave it overnight. Now we're going to leave this covered on the counter overnight. Okay. We are back in the morning. Our pre-ferment has bubbled up quite nicely. Uh, so I'm going to be making four loaves of bread, but in the description I'll put the recipe for one and four. The process is the same. Uh, we're just going to be splitting up the doughs. All right, we're doing 1,740 grams of bread flour and 40 grams of whole wheat. So it's pretty chilly in here this morning, so I'm going to use uh, as warm a water as I can get out of the tap for this. Uh, and it was 1,370 grams of water. Now it's the fun and sticky time. This step is called the auto lease. And what this is doing is trying to completely mix the flour and the water together. A lot of times when you mix the flour and water, it gets a bit clumpy. And so what this does is it gives a little extra time for that water and flour to actually completely combine. So we're gonna give this a good mix by hand. Scrape it all off the walls. See, it's a bit clumpy still, a bit slimy, but that's okay. We're going to leave this for about 10 to 15 minutes, and all that water is going to soak into the flour and make it more usable. So, we brought this flour back in the bucket. Okay, we're back 10 minutes later. Now we're going to put in our salt and our pre-ferment. So salt, we're going to go 40 to 50 grams. I like to go a little heavier, I think it gives a little more flavor to the bread. Uh, I like to get my hand wet for this next part. It makes the dough not stick quite so much. And then we're going to put this whole bucket of pre-ferment in. If you're only making one loaf, then you're going to only want to do about a quarter of this, which is about 100 grams. We're gonna go in and use all this starter because we got a big, big batch going. Okay. One more time, get my hand wet. Because when you come in and you do the mixing, having a little wet hand helps. 
So now we're just coming in and I'm just kind of squeezing the bread. So yeah, so I'm just going through, give it a little twist, give it a squeeze. Just trying just to completely bring that starter into the auto lease. Once you feel like it's good and mixed, we'll give it a couple folds. So a fold is just picking up half and putting it down, folding it on top of each other. Now we'll let this sit for 15 minutes. Wet my hand again, come back in, now we lift and fold. This is helping to build the gluten in the bread and make it nice and chewy, good crispy crust. So make sure you're getting all of it off the bottom. So that's all it takes to fold. Another 15 minutes. Oh yeah, we're getting some good gluten build up now. See, it's holding together much better. Give it, give it a little shake. All right, so we're gonna do that two more times and then we're gonna let it rest, uh, or let it rise, excuse me. A little hard with one hand, can't hold the bucket, but give it a spin. Give it a flip. But as you can see, it's much smoother now than it was. Okay, now we're gonna put a lid on this and leave it all day uh, and get it to be a bit puffier. We wanna get it to the, you know, 10 to 12 quarts or so. Uh, so we'll let this rise and we'll come back to it. All right, it's been chilly in here, so it's taken a little longer to rise, but we are up to the top. It's got some good structure. Uh, so now we gotta put it in baskets if you only have a bowl. That works, you just want to put in, uh, you can put in saran wrap or something like that just to keep it from sticking. I use flour in these uh, reed bowls. The reed works really well, uh, lets it breathe pretty well. Um, this is just kind of the go-to for making bread. And so what I want to do is put a bunch of flour in all these little ridges, smooth it around. Now I'm gonna set these to the side. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this on the counter, just so it don't stick on the counter. Take this, get a bench scraper. I like the plastic ones, don't scratch quite so much. As gently as possible, you wanna put this, scrape this out of the bowl. split this into four pieces because I'm making four. Uh, so depending on which recipe you use, if you only have one, then you're just going to put it straight into a, uh, we're going to make the bun out of it, put it into a bowl. Uh, because we're doing four, we're going to make four out of it. So I just take it, slice it down the middle, like that. Now I'm taking it and do the same thing again. Do it both times. Now I like to pinch everything up, or pinch the four corners and flip it over. And so I'm gonna do that with all four, flip them over. Okay. So all of this process, you wanna be as delicate as you can. Pretend it's a big bubble, and you don't wanna lose any of the air that's in it, because that's what's giving us the big, nice, fluffy bubbles in this bread. Okay. So now we're going to form them into loaves. And so how we do that is you put a little flour on top just so your hands don't stick. Uh, and then you want to take your hands, your pinky finger, and kind of use it to push the bottom of the loaf down and under. And then you can do the same thing from this side. Pinch, push down. And so you just kind of work your way around, pushing the bottom under a little more until you make the loaf. You don't want to go too much because you don't want the top to split. And then 
a little trick, once you have the bun made, I like to pinch the bottom like this. That just holds it together. And then you're gonna put it pinch side down in the mold. So we're gonna do the same thing to all four of these. Nice circular motion. There you go. Circular motion till you get a nice tight little bun. Pinch the bottom and then put the pinch side down. So try and make them as even as possible as far as sizes. Um, I didn't do a great job today, but it'll, it'll still turn into bread. So do the last one. Pinch the bottom. Now, if you see, we got four nice little buns. They're relatively even in size. Now we have one more time to let them rest to rise in their uh, actual loaf shape. So I like to have some sort of covering over them just so they don't dry out. So we have these bowls that happen to fit our read bowls very well. So we're just going to set these. And I'm only going to leave these for about an hour or two. And then we'll bake them. So we'll just leave this here. Clean up our flour mess. And we'll be back in an hour or two. Alright, for this particular oven, I have found that uh, 460 is a great temperature for it. Uh, it's already preheated. I have my baking stone in here already. Nice and scraped off. Pick the biggest ones to start off with. We'll go with this one. Alright, I like to give it a little tug away from the edges just to make sure that it's free. And then we just help it out onto the baking. The pizza stone, bread stone, whatever you want to call it. Drop it right on there. Slide this back in. I like to add about a cup, quarter cup of water in there on the bottom. It keeps a nice crisp crust uh, on the outside of the bread. And so we're going to set the timer here uh, for 30 minutes. Uh, and we will come back and swap out the next two loaves of bread. And then we'll have all four and we'll show you how delicious those look. And we'll cut into them a little later. They're coming out lovely. Look at that crunch. Lovely looking sourdough bread, got some nice big bubbles, crunchy crust, delicious. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned how to make some sourdough bread. Let me know in the comments if you make it and you like it. And uh, maybe consider subscribing so you can see future videos. Thanks, bye. Let's go.